After the mediocre opening episode of The Acolyte, let's see if Disney can turn the Star Wars ship around and write something that actually makes me excited. Unfortunately, it's more of the same. People do the most ridiculous things that make no practical sense. This show loves people having knowledge that only the audience and one character knows. This episode is a 5 out of 10. It's stupid and boring. It feels like it was written for 7 year olds. Here we are on the beautiful planet of Alaya. Where the Jedi Temple has a similar security system to that of Jabba's palace. You remember Jabba. Anyway, this Indian kid joins the ranks of terrible actors in Disney Star Wars as she is quite unbearable in her 5 seconds of screen time. She distracted the guard droid so May can plant a hacking device in a place she could have placed it anyway. May just walks straight past another person who doesn't seem to have their suspicions raised by a masked woman walking through the temple. <laughs> oh my god, Torben's old man makeup is hilarious. It's impossible not to look at it and think, why? Attack me with all your strength. <laughs> it never gets old. God damn it, he looks like someone from Team America. So this ship has the only spare bed in the engineering section. Oh my god, did she just assume her profession during Pride Month? Once again, Yord is the only smart one. Just handcuff her. They could be in cahoots. Wait, the Jedi don't do after mission reports? I watched Masters of the Air at the beginning of the year, and even in World War II they had after mission interrogations for all staff. They weren't even allowed to chit chat until after the interrogation so that to not influence their recollections. Yord and Sol have a disagreement about whether to take Osha on a mission to capture May. I'm inclined to agree that it's a bad idea as the chances of a comedic which one is the good one scenario is just too high. But Sol says that the Jedi agree with him. Wait, aren't we all Jedi on this ship? Do you mean the Jedi Council? Wait, so they killed an apothecarist and took over his shop, but May is still providing poisonous herbs from her own planet? So May just needs to kill one of the four without a weapon to please the master. Why is he her master? What does he offer? Sol's just letting Osha hack into their ship. No way, I'll be confiscating that thing. So they had a break in and they've just left the sunroof open. Are they mad? Holy hell, what on earth is that? What's his Jedi name? Obese Want Kentucky? That's no Jedi, it's a space station. Sol believes that Torben will break his 10 years vow of silence, even though it's been 16 years since May's death. They believe it to be somehow related? That's six years he carried on. Once the little Indian girl fingers Osha, why would the resident Jedi allow her into the temple? Surely they'd be suspicious. May offers for Torben to confess to the Jedi Council, so he must have done something against the rules of the Jedi Order. But what could he have done? Must be something particularly heinous if he's willing to top himself rather than simply confess. Does Torben know that's May, or does he just think that Osha has come to visit? So he recognises her, but how? Is there only two black girls in the galaxy? Why do Jackie and Yord both walk around Osha as she slows? Yord of all people should be keeping a close eye on her. Now while May is negotiating Torben's surrender, she's also force projecting an image to Osha. Or is that all in her head? How does any of this work? So Osha just decides to break away from the group while she's still on the list of suspects? Genius. Luckily Yord catches her. This makes absolutely no sense. How does Osha break off from the main group who are being taken to see Master Torben and arrive earlier than the people who live there? And to top it all off, she kneels over the corpse and handles the murder weapon. It's like she wants to be the prime suspect. Naturally, the resident Jedi who can't navigate his own home efficiently draws his weapon as he sees a stranger kneeling over the presumed corpse of a Jedi Master in his own temple. But thankfully, Yord is hiding in the shadows, listening as the accusations are made, and waits until the very end to pop out and 
explain what actually happened. What odd behavior. Why would Master Torben kill himself? You know, the Jedi have been in a meditative trance for the last decade to escape his past. It's a mystery. Why are they waiting on the balcony? Just wait in the alley or stand next to the door. I don't know why they're not arresting this guy. Arrest him and then arrest May when she comes back. Hey, hey, Yord has a bad feeling about this. Maybe that's where Han Solo got his famous catchphrase. <laughs> Yord's binoculars can change the elevation you're viewing from. That's just lazy production. Another one of these fights where the master looks bored. Yawn. For the record, I like the Return of the Jedi fights the best. Like you're also trying to not get hit while attempting to hit your opponent. Searching for weaknesses. You should not be flipping or doing lightsaber twirls. Soul teleports behind May. Nothing personal, kid. That's it. Levitator. Now what's she gonna do? Nothing. That's what. Pocket sand. So May got away in the car. Jackie is still flying above the city. Why can't she track her? Obese want Kentucky gets distracted by a girl. He's really giving in to his baser instincts. I think we need a show following his rise to greatness. May attacks Ezra Miller and he easily counters her. That's not suspicious at all. Fatty somehow misses them even though they're one meter away on the other side of the alley. One final scene of the forest moon event, uh, Kofar. Kalnaka the Wookiee Jedi and now Nudist has to run off a couple of scavengers who are trying to strip his ship for parts. They must be some pretty ballsy scavengers because this ship is clearly in use. Kalnaka uses the force to force pull the weapons from the scavengers hands, but he seems to be having trouble breaking it in two. And that's the end of episode two of the Acolyte. As I said earlier, it's absolute garbage. People do the most ridiculous things like wandering away when you're a suspect, crouching over a body and handling the murder weapon. What an idiot. Honestly, a 5 out of 10 is almost too good for this show. The sets in this episode look like something out of Sesame Street. The terrible makeup on Master Torben elicited a giggle from me. And May's stupid attack me with all your strength routine. It seems like the writers are trying way too hard. There's no way that I could possibly believe May is going to end the series as a villain. Not now that she has a creepy male following her around. He has to be a bad influence. But he won't get the benefit of the doubt. I don't like any of these characters. May and Osha are boring. Sol is too stoic. Jackie is too uppity. And probably the best character of the lot, Yord, is used as the butt of all the jokes. When he's the only one trying to follow procedure. I really only want to know two things. One, what did Torben do that he would rather take a dirt nap than confess to his own organization? And two, who is the mysterious Sith? My bets are currently on Kamiya, Ezra Miller, as he's the only person so far with the means and the motivation. I could not care less if Osha and May get back together as a happy fan. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time, and have a good one.